Okay, so there's one last thing we need to talk about before we can undertake a proper ISLM analysis. And so, uh, well, let's start with fiscal policy. So, as we've talked about, fiscal policy has everything to do with the government's uh, revenue or income. And all of you should know that when revenue is more than uh, expenditure for the government, we have something called a budget surplus. And when revenue is less than expenditure, we have something called a budget deficit. So what is the government's revenue? It's effectively taxation. And expenditure is the G that we have already talked about, so GNT. So um, whenever the government's fiscal policy leads to either a reduction in taxation or an increase in G. So either T is going down and or G is going up. This is known as a fiscal contraction. No, wait, that's not right. Uh, actually, no, uh, it's my bad. This is called a fiscal expansion because what has happened is that the deficit is increasing. And if the reverse happens, is that taxation is going up. And on the other hand, G is going down. We have something called a fiscal contraction. These are also known as uh, expansionary fiscal policy or a contractionary fiscal policy. And similarly, for monetary policy, uh, whenever the money supply increase, so effectively, the government, the central bank reduces the interest rate, which leads to money supply increasing. This is called a monetary expansion or an expansionary monetary policy. And if the opposite happens, where interest rate is increased, and as a result, money supply falls, we have something called a monetary contraction. So if I use terms such as this in future in our lectures or even in exam questions, when I say a monetary contraction, you guys should know immediately what that means or a fiscal expansion. You should know immediately what that means. Okay, so now that we understand this much, we can now finally go and do a bit of ISLM analysis.